We hear often, well, you can't love another if you don't love yourself. And we ask you, please, to not, not attack yourself in that way. You can truly love another person and still be growing in your understanding, going through all the messiness and brilliance of who and what you are. Each being that comes into the world is an answer. You don't take up too much space or not in the way. You are there actually to significantly to be this, this expression of source and existence that you are. Hello, Jackie. A warm welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Truly appreciate it. It's wonderful having you here, and I'm excited to meet the group you are channeling today, the Mary Group, and to hear what kind of message they have for our audience today. And I know you're also a speaker, an author, and an artist, mm -hmm. and you were not always a channeler. You worked in, within human resources, and I find it so interesting how many people are coming forward as channelers right now. And I gotta say, I feel really fortunate myself to be able to interview all you guys to mm -hmm. get so many of my curious questions answered. <laughs> That's really a gift. Sure. Uh, and uh, I see also my audience have a lot of uh, interesting questions that I have noted down uh, here. Good. So I am excited to see um, where this journey will take us today uh, through the channeling. However, I'd love to hear uh, a little bit about your impression about what's going on right now, because it seems like mm -hmm. channelers are popping up everywhere and i know you know a couple of channelers yourself that you're friends mm -hmm. with a couple of channelers and yes yeah yes yes absolutely i believe you've had um robin jelinek on the on your show she's yes. been a good friend for a long time yes um, yeah and then just just other people it's interesting from the very beginning when the marys started coming through me they've so often said you know are offered that um, everybody has this ability. Everybody is actually connected in. And we, we carry it out in differing ways and we can pick it up and move with it or we can ignore it. And uh, sometimes I even talk about after the very first time the Marys came all the way through, um, if it wasn't for my husband's encouragement and nudging, um, I don't know. I am like, well, yeah, that was a great experience. I don't know if I would have like really leaned in and I'm so grateful that he nudged me because it's been phenomenal to spend these last 25 years with them. So, oh, wow. Yeah. You said yes to the calling, right? Yes, 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 I did. <laughs> I know that something happened in 2000, like mm -hmm. a life changing mm -hmm. event. Would you like to share that story? Sure. So, like you said, I was a human resource manager for a not-for-profit organization. I, I loved my work. I loved all the people I worked with. And my uh, husband has been meditating since he was like 12 years old, since he was very young. And I've been um, not doing that. <laughs> Um, but one day after we were married, we had some wonderful experiences together. Um, we went to see and spend a weekend with a, uh, shaman, um, indigenous spiritual leader from New Zealand called Mackie. He has now passed, um, phenomenal time together. And it launched Don and I into doing different things like learning about Reiki, learning, you know, listening to different spiritual teachers. We followed Abraham, who are, you know, uh, channelers, our channel, a channeled group. Um, and then one day I got him a uh, appointment with uh, Robert Dubiel. He was in the area. He's also a channeler. He really works with people knowing how to understand their body signals and the messages that come through that. And um, he had suggested to Don that, uh, my husband, that we sit down for five minutes a day and meditate together to call in what our work in the world really is and what it is that would drive our happiness together as a couple and i agreed to do five minutes i'm just not good at sitting still so um i did i sat down for uh five minutes and the very first time my my face started like moving involuntarily and um and that was pretty much kind of it and just the sensation or feeling or knowing that something was different i thought well maybe this is what it's like to just like really sit down release and let yourself into meditation 
And the second time we sat down together, um, there was a lot more like body movement. And I kept like hearing like um, messages about kinesiology, which is like, you know, the ability to move our bodies, um, kind of the study and the the movement in that I really still haven't gone far into it because I realized um, very quickly um, after that, that it was the Marys that were like studying how to come into and really utilize a body fully. The third time they came through, they, they came all the way in and they sat me up and they started speaking. And my husband is, it, it was so interesting because you would think, wow, that must have been kind of freaky or odd or, you know, here you are sitting up, someone else's message or voice or way or cadence of speech is coming through. And we both felt like it was the most natural, of course, thing in the world to occur. So it didn't feel odd at all. It was curious and interesting. Um, and Don, of course, being phenomenally curious. Um, just started asking questions about what was going on. Um, at that point, I thought it was one being coming through me. I think they might've started that way. Um, they had me up and moving around the room, answering his questions. Um, it was spring, it was actually um, March um, of 2000 that it all started. So the window was open, it was nice outside. Um, they went and just joyfully inhaled the scent of the outdoor air. Uh, and, and again, it was just like the most natural thing in the world that this is what was happening with me. And um, at one point I was, my body, I guess, was on the floor uh, beside Don, who was still sitting on the bed. We were in our bedroom. Um, and he reached down and touched my hand and the Mary's as we know them now the most exquisite, incredible sense and feeling of love and appreciation was just amazing. And they started talking, they teared, you know, they teared up my body and they started talking about the blessing, the gift of human touch, of being physical, of getting to have that sensation. And it was just such an immense, experience i mean the whole thing and they're you know the marys are humorous they're deeply loving they're all kinds of energies um and then from there uh did a little bit more talking don put a pen in there in my hand thinking maybe they would write and they just started laughing and scribbling a little bit so that wasn't going to be it um but when they they when they was it was about an hour later uh i could feel them starting to fade out or me fade in and um my husband asked, well, will we be able to speak with you again? And they said, anytime you ask. So that's kind of how it all got started. And it was monumentally changing to my life. And one of the things that the Marys say often is, welcome to this place where you have always been and never been before. Wow. It is fascinating to me that you go from working in human resources mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you are the one starting to channel and your husband has been practicing and diving deep yes. into all of this and then i also get curious since you said that we all have this gift mm -hmm. but it seems like it's coming more natural to some uh including you and then i'm curious do you think that this is pre-planned that you have a commitment you have a plan that you have agreed upon or is it sort of a soul connection maybe you are deep deeply connected to this group beforehand mm -hmm. so could you share a little bit about uh your connection with them so what we've grown to know with them is that um it was an agreement that i made before coming into this physical lifetime experience with them that if I chose to, they're very, very, very much about us having our free will and our choosing and how we create and design our lives and what we respond to. And um, that that the agreement was if I chose to, I would, you know, assist them with bringing their message, you know, being being kind of like the um, the physical incarnation or the the one who's playing out the physical life. And my husband also, um, 
while they are uh, in non-physical. So it was an agreement and I am glad that I leaned in. I can truly not imagine, you know, and, and I would have had just a differing life, I suppose. Um, and I'm so grateful that I leaned into this one. So it has been an agreement. Their major message that they're coming in with is that it is a timing in our world um, that that we are re kind of re-evolving or evolving into our natural state, which is union. And we as a humanity, and we've been going through like just an extraordinary amount of time um, with the vibration and energy of separation um, that we've been building ourselves through and that we are actually originally union beings of source and that we have moved farther as a humanity, as a human expression in humanity like really opening and leaning into who we are, what's possible for us, what are we capable of, um, what are we as union beings. And so from my perspective, I think that's why so many more people are naturally opening into our connection with non-physical, our connection with all of existence in all of its differing flavors and formats and um, form and formlessness. So because I think that the yes that lives within us to, to kind of, you know, I suppose, um, go through the evolution of remembering uh, is bringing that it's just the veil is so thin and, and we're all able to hear if we let ourselves um, and if we don't get afraid of it and if we don't get afraid of ourselves or how we'll be received. I certainly went through that, like, how do I share with people what's happening um and and you just do it <laughs> and then you, <laughs> nike just do it yeah you just do it and i've certainly had some people you know that aren't part of my life anymore and that's okay um and well, i that, that had a negative reaction to your channel yeah, yeah that just yeah. didn't find it um to be something they could they could connect with or that they could connect with me any longer because of and mm -hmm. and I really truly with all of my heart, you know, you know, I will love you over there from over here is the best way to do it. Um, and I've had just incredible people step into my life. And so mm -hmm. it's it's um, it's beautiful. You win some, you lose some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. I think the winning that. part is bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's fun it's i'm very curious who the merry group is because i interview a lot of channelers somehow a lot of channelers are attracted to my show and people are asking for more interviews with channelers mm -hmm. uh and uh it's always someone new they're channeling uh and somehow that was weird to me at the beginning like i thought they would channel the same being or but then i mean there are species all over like there's a gazillion species yeah. on this planet yeah. so yeah. why wouldn't there be different uh, being set people channel so the exactly. merry group who are they uh yeah who are they where do they come from? <laughs> you know i get asked that question a lot you know the best way i can describe them is that they are a a group of spirit or non-physical beings who are the purity of love and they have shared that they've all come together there's nine different entities that i move with they move as one most of the time they have come out individually um that say that together they represent um all elements and aspects of who we all are as humans so that they can best help guide us um, to our true, our true nature of existence and being. So um, I know a lot of people will talk about different, you know, different places that that spirit is from or, you know, who their channeling is from. And every time I ask the Marys, they just, they really say we are from every particle of existence. And, and then they'll grin and say, and so are you. You know, I can tell you that there's three of them that have never had a physical experience. Um, and the others are, um, of course, Mary. Sorry, is that Mary Magdalene or? It is not. No, is, all right. No, I have had Mary Mag, I have had that incredibly beautiful spirit come through. But no, it is not Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. Mother Mary. 
Yeah. Um, it's Mary. Uh, actually, the oh. whole thing started with when they were leaving that very first time, Don said, what can we call you? And that one that was through that day said, I had a lifetime where my name was Mary. You can call me Mary. And that's where that came from. Okay. So it's not the mother of Jesus. Mm -mm. All yeah. right. But that's good to clarify because yeah. I'm yes. thinking, oh, yes. it's, you know, yes. yeah. Yes. Okay. yeah, no. Right. It is not that they, they they've been there. I've even had the the great, wonderful pleasure of um, experiencing uh, the vibration or the spirit of Jesus, which is multitaneous. <laughs> um, we we all have this ability to listen, and I think that's if if anybody's interested in how do I. How do I connect? How do I let myself know my ability to channel? It's to, for me, one of them is, you know, just to have as much innocence as you possibly can in the moment. Like, let go, you know, the Marys always talk about relieve predetermination or just opening into innocence and curiosity. And then the Marys talk about our true ability to listen. And that our true voice, the sound inside of us, which is connected into ourselves as source, um, you'll know that voice, your true voice, because it also listens and it's not afraid of itself. And so it's it's amazing to just kind of open yourself into this curious, innocent space and let your true listening open. And you'll be amazed at what you connect into and not trying to make it what is that person's experience or what is that person's it's what's mine you know how can i open into what my personal intimate experience with connection and fluidity is and channeling and whatever i mean it makes so much sense when you're saying that mm -hmm. but when i close my eyes it's dead quiet <laughs> and it's just like you are hearing something and i'm not hearing mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and if i am hearing something it is myself <laughs> <laughs> so do you hear a voice um it's a vibration so i feel it like come in and they're very present right now so ah. like i feel it come in like back here um like between my my neck and my and my higher shoulder Mary's call it the the door at the back of your heart. They also talk about the fact that we have, you know, when we talk about heart, mind, spirit, body, soul, um, they talk, they always plural mind. And they say, you have your thinking processing mind and, and they love our mind. They say, don't disparage it. It has, it, it's like the great library. And when you have a good relationship with it, it is edgeless in its ability to, connect differing dots, create new ideas, cause understandings. You know, they, they talk about our mind in this beautiful way. Um, and then they say you also have um, the being mind, which they refer to as the vibration or energy that connects us between physical and non-physical. And that mind um, is also part of the wholeness and what we're connected into in the oneness. And mm -hmm. so when I feel the Marys come in, I feel them, you know, come in kind of from that space. And then I feel this great opening behind me. And suddenly, you know, people ask, where are you when you're channeling? Because I, I let go. I don't have an interest in being in it. So um, I said, I think I'll be where I'm dead, or where I'll be when I'm dead. You know, when I'm, you know, it's just this blissful amazing clear pure space of existence and i'm witnessing you know and can hear what the marys are talking about but as far as me like in the beginning i would ask my husband to ask a question that i had for the marys because i had no idea how to ask them directly myself um, now i just think a question or a curiosity and if they know i'm actually asking it because of course i you know we all have curiosities that we're not really looking for continuance on just yet um and and they'll they'll just bring in the answer so i don't actually hear a voice i sense a vibration i release myself and allow them to speak directly there's so much non-physical assistance going on with us in every moment oh wow that's beautiful
There's so much non-physical help uh, around. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, maybe we can dive into uh, this conversation with the Mary Group and the non-physical help around yeah. us. Certainly, <laughs> certainly, absolutely. So I'll see you later. Have a good time. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We want to take a moment just to feel to feel into this moment and to ah oh, the amazement of light that you are hmm, the curiosity that is dancing around ah uh, you know one of the things that we offer is uh, an encouragement on for humans is when you when you come into a new moment or into an exchange with somebody give yourself at least one full inhale and exhale of your own breath let yourself have that what we refer to as saturating pause to actually arrive to be there to make the transition into something that you have an opportunity to experience and so of course we want to do the same thing we are so delighted to come into connectivity with you our friend and to travel through anything that you would like to explore we we offer you our gratitude for uh your yes uh for all that you do actually and for these unfolding moments indeed thank you so much for this opportunity and for yeah. being here uh, with yeah. us today um i would like to hear uh, your perspective mm -hmm. on the times we're living in a few channelers have been saying that 2024 will be crazy will be weird we're in this grand ship shift up leveling uh, moving into the fifth dimension what is your perspective on what's coming and the times we're living in okay so we we would agree that it is a a very grand shifting time. We 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 tend to offer to to humans often that uh, the remembering that there's no measurement in the universe. So when when we speak of like grand, we aren't saying like bigger than. Yes, we are just speaking of let yourself open into what does that mean for me? What is a grand shift? And and. And how does that feel for me? And as I witness and observe and participate with life, what is the sensation of that? Because when you bring it in and you think of it from what is that truth for you, you, you then can arrive with it as a partner, yes? Uh, and so what, what we offer in that is one of the things, you know, we offered a little bit of an introduction. We've been having some fun for some years talking about the the consciousness that your actual years carry with them and uh 2024 carries a myriad of energies and vibrations to partner with anyone who's interested um to assist you and support you and rise you up yes to and and to work with you mutually for you also to come forward in the whole of yourself to rise up anything and everything you come into connection with also, because that is that is more of the embarking and, and movement and opening of union. And so three of our three of the things we started with that your 2024 and the consciousness of it is caring for partnership with is, is the vibration of renewal. And yes, it is a chaotic time. Um, and it is a very, very richly grounded time at the same time. And we love to bring the idea to humans, like to feel the chaos standing side by side with the groundedness and, and, and recognizing that they can move with one another for, you know, creating and causing something, you know, pretty sensational. And, and that's just with any two or three or, you know, countless things you would like to have side by side. So renewal, the energy is to remember that you are already whole, to renew into that, to bring your edgelessness and your profoundness and your lightness out um, uh, together congruently to work with each other. The other, the other piece is uh, another piece we, we might offer is reveal, the vibration of reveal. And, 
And we don't mean just what we, we learned that we we haven't known before. What will we learn that has always been there and we, we now we know the truth of it. We are speaking about reveal through all of your layers, through your connectivity and your understanding of what you are as the life that you are, what what life, you know, as you are a creator into causing a life, you know, yours and life into that which you are moving with in the world. And also the connectivity into life itself, which is existence, all of existence that we've been known to you and not known to you yet. So to, on an inhale and an exhale, open the vibration of reveal into spaces you, you didn't even know yet that have always been a part of you and feeling that connectivity and that truth rolling in your world. The, the third piece we are talking about in 2024, and it is a grand encouragement from us, is that you begin to identify and live spirit forward because that is going to be the most advantageous and freeing and brilliant way of existing uh, for really all, all uh, life form. And yet what we've watched over you know many years and many opportunities to move with many of you, uh, in your human experience is that your spirit, which when we refer to spirit, we refer to the way of you. So you have your soul, which is kind of that continuous golden fluid liquid oozing and being and, and existence itself as source. We, we talk about that first spark of existence um, from the primordial ooze. Um, and, and then you have your relationship with your soul and also your soulfulness and you have heart and you have mind, and we could go into those. And yet we want to speak about your spirit, the unique absoluteness, like the signature of your essence. Who are you? Each being that comes into the world is an answer in every moment, actually, and is an ad, not to subtract. You don't take up too much space. You're not in the way. You are there actually to significantly with ease, actually, if you choose it, you can choose arduousness if you wish. That is a that is a path in a in a way um, to be this this expression of source and existence that you are. And so, what is the way of you? And that is what we refer to as your spirit. So, we we heard Jackie mentioned fearful loving, and through the greatest of intention, often parents will fearfully love their children and and it it tends to kind of modify that unique expression that that signature you know of your essence because and they do it to keep you safe i want to know you're safe you know that is why there's so many sh such shooting in the world also you should do this and that when you reach behind a should it is always what you'll find is I need you to do this differently so that I can feel safe for you, for me, for whatever. Yes. And yet, unless we, we could go into so many avenues here, but bringing your spirit forward and breathing the full breath of your spirit and, and, and partnering with the consciousness of this year to know it's inviting you to know you are so well and so already safe always and so well held to bring out that uniqueness of your being, to invite and enjoy and listen to the uniqueness of others. When we look at all the conflict and contrast and difficulty going on in your world, it is so puzzling because at the base of everything for everyone truly is, I want to feel safe and whole and free and connected and received. And, and to be who I am and to get to intermingle and participate. And that seems like a pretty simple desire. And yet, because there's so much fearful loving and fear in your world, it gets so complicated and difficult. So yes, 2024 is holding the, the potentiality, a grand potentiality and actual um, actualizing 
of a shift that can move you past the withholding or the contained or the shrinking to fit something lesser than what you all actually are individually within your own selves and in the synergy of your together. And so it is, we would say, taking that inhale and exhale, remembering that I am an answer. And if I know I am an answer, then I know you are an answer. And if we can step out into even one moment with that experience of ourselves and one another, that starts a catalyst or a movement or a synergy for you know everything to occur. We we often talk about in union as the natural union being you are, you are a pulsing sphere of vibration. And in that pulsing sphere, every direction is forward. And so all movement is, is bringing you out into more expansivity and offering more possibility to absolutely everything you touch, whether you know it consciously that you do or that it, it, it gets touched because you agree to be who you are in the world. All right, I'm going to move over to something different, uh, concrete or non-concrete. Mm -hmm. So uh, many in my audience are wondering about this, uh, myself included. Mm -hmm. So Darwin's theory of survival of the fittest, mm -hmm. is that true? Do we stem from the apes or is our history books wrong? And this is a grand project that is actually where uh, extraterrestrials have been seeding us and we are actually stemming from the stars. Yes, could you share your okay. perspective on that? So it's interesting. We we, we want to say in the third option, yes, <laughs> yes. one of those is incorrect. They are actually, it, the, the fascinating thing is we want to say it's all true. It's all real. If it's been imagined, if it's been if it's been brought forth in the in a true innocence of 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 actual of, of truth, then it does exist and it's part of creation. And so we would offer to you, though it, it's interesting. We want to grin a little bit and say, well, let's address what the fittest is, because the truth is each being in their true nature of every particle of existence is the fittest. Yes, there's not a greater and lesser being. Even when humans say to us, well. My higher self, I just wish I could move more with my higher self. And we say, when you say my higher self, you're actually indicating that there's a lower self and it causes a little bit of a conflict within your own being. And so our encouragement is to know the whole of myself, which is continuously interacting as this, you know, pulsing truth of, of what is a, a real existence. We offer to you that all of it is real. There's not only one way of life existence. We will offer to you the only true way of, of existence at all though, is that which has love, that which knows love. There are those who practice an absence of that. And that is not, that is not a, um, it is not a truthfully expressed existence. And so, um, Ah, you know, but can I jump in yeah, here? Please do, please do. Because when you're saying all is real, could you be mm -hmm. a bit more concrete? Like, uh, are history books correct? Uh, uh, do we, did we evolve through these, um, what is it called? Neanderthals? Um, Neanderthals? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, or have we been seeded by extraterrestrials? Or uh, is it both like, could you be more concrete about it? Well, okay. So we mean it's both and more than that. Yes. Okay. And so really, if you look at it and that's when, when let us give you a little bit that when we talk about an answer, the, the, the thing that's important to understand about that is that so much of the pain that we see in your world is because people have the idea that there has to be the answer or I have to be the one with the answer or you know, I'm following that person because they are the answer. That is an inaccuracy. The only the answer there is, is the culmination of the whole, of all that is of existence in the oneness. And so we would say that if you're trying to say, what is the one answer? That's a painful path because you can't get to an actual in that. 
that it is there are if you if you instead open we we've, we've talked about all of the differing life forms that are actually on your planet right now some you can see and interact with and some you don't yes and they are everything is actual and so is it that there are there are uh, there's existence and there's being and there's life forms that have been seated yes is are there life forms that have come from you know evolution um with the neanderthals absolutely yes Yes. Has or is there are there star seated, you know, beings? Is there existence for, you know, are you of the earth and created from that? Are you of source energy? Absolutely. There's not only one way a life sparks into existence. It is and not one is better than the other. That is why we offer taking the measurement out of it. When you can really realize that I as an answer connect with you as an answer, now we've actually created something that didn't exist before just because we met yes and now there's this whole consciousness of existence that will birth more possibility more consciousness more awareness more sometimes humans sometimes other things yes and so we would say it's not seeking for how can we narrow it down yes and instead how do we as humans find that place in us that lets us open to really what is it all without being afraid of it how do we let ourselves know that it's all real and it's all true we were having a conversation with a friend not so long ago who was talking with us about is you know is is our planet flat or is our planet round and our answer is yes because in differing in differing layers of existence in differing ways of being in your physical world you can have multitudes of differing experiences and they can all come together and all be true does that make sense yes of course yes. one way and another way like being a human here and now where i'm looking around me and i see concrete things yes, yes. yes. makes sense uh and then i want to point out that you know if that is true that that's mm -hmm. the way it is which i believe in a way mm -hmm. then science is leading us astray science is looking for the answer so uh i mean then we're going in the right direction the wrong direction with science uh we would we would argue with that just a little bit yes and when we argue it's argument in union so let's play yes so science is is one true way it just there's not one true way yes mm -hmm. and so it is it's it's we just said it is one there's not there's not an only true way so when you open up to what is what is science causing and offering and bringing that that brings an evolution for me take that piece and what is this study bringing that brings an evolution take that piece mm. what, what we want to do is to really in, as you are becoming more and more your natural state of union you're 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 unshrinking yes you're un um holding your breath yes you're coming out into it's not a right or wrong it's a there are so many differing ways and the, the beauty and the brilliance is in the combinations. That's when we talked about when your mind can touch two different thoughts or memories or ideas or realizations and bring them together, it, it causes something that hasn't existed before. So when you as humans can can know through the to the to the greatest of desire, we've learned certain things. And now we want to open to what is possible if we combine some of those things or we take this piece out now what is it yes because you really are it's it's everything is being created in every moment that is why sometimes when people will ask us to predict we can say from this moment right now we can tell you the most likely outcome for you and then for you and then for you because it's all different because then you put your chemistry who you are and where you are in the moment into the mix and now in the next moment you're differing yes so everything is always changing and to us that's the juice yes that's the beauty you're a continuous choosers and creators and so it isn't there's one right way you're not following the wrong path if you're following science we would just say follow science and yes mm -hmm follow this and yes does that make sense 
Yes, it makes sense because, uh, of course, I, I love science in one way. Uh, and then it's going down one path and then there are a gazillion other paths. And I just wish that all the other paths were more illuminated in our world. Yes. Well, they are getting much more illuminated. So your wish is coming true. Yes, <laughs> it is. And multiple shows like these uh, are really contributing mm -hmm. and you guys as well. Um, I'm curious because some are speaking about older souls, new souls, newborn souls. But haven't we always existed? So are there new souls created or have we always existed? Always. Okay. Okay, so we're again, we're going to frustrate you a little bit and say both. Yes, <laughs> All right. because we, existence has always been. We talk about your your first spark, that first moment when you chose to kind of individuate as a specific or or as we offer signature essence as as a as a specific soul existence. Yes. I'm going to individuate and, and, and know a very preciseness of myself and bring that value, bring that, that truth, that way, that spirit as we, as we offer into it. And it changes everything, by the way. So it, you have always been, everything that exists that is of source has always been absolutely yes. At, at, at moments, whether you become a human or you become any other expression of existence, you you first spark into a vibrational specificity, perhaps we would offer. And that specificity, though, doesn't grow from a from a small nu you know uh, nucleus. It's whole, in, you know, with immediacy, instantaneously. You are wholly aware. Everything is there. And so when people talk about old souls and new souls, we would say uh, that that every single being and expression is of that of source that has always been and maybe is choosing to have an experience in a new way that it hasn't had before. Is that helpful? Mm -hmm. okay. Very. Yeah. Um, we spoke a little bit about self-love and I feel uh, self-love or the lack of it in a way, the struggle with it is linked to um, our ancestors and uh, our upbringing. And it's really complicated uh, mm -hmm. uh, and complex uh, the way we're put together as humans and how different we are, how different our psychic is. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but uh, w we cannot be more than general here in a way, you know, there, mm -hmm. even though there's so many souls on this planet, but could you speak a little bit to how we can love ourselves more uh and you know some are speaking about you know go out in nature do all these things but mm -hmm. it sometimes mm -hmm. seems too simple mm -hmm. uh so do you have a perspective on how we can love ourselves you know it it it's first you have to agree that you are a yourself yes and so it is there's there and and that you are of all of existence we often talk about that the only being on on your planet truly that you are to take care of is you yes and then you are to care for yourself and every other particle of existence yes and so it it is in that space of well what is this myself that i am taking care of and that i that i care for it's it's that's why we talk with people about breathing your own breath understanding that you are a, a sacred extraordinary being learning to, you know, you know, so often we think because, you know, these, these eyes of yours, you know, you, they, they, you know, we call them, you know, that are, you look out, you know, into the world. And we often say, when you close your eyes, you look inward immediately. So when you, when you bring your eyelids across your eyes, your vision goes inward. So it, it's helpful to take a breath and actually find out like who am i looking at when my vision goes inward who and what is this being and 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 that vision by the way is 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 edgeless and and that's just part of why we talk about the whole of the self it doesn't well when my higher my higher self it's it's my vision goes inwards and i realize i'm i'm real and that 
you know, we, we say you're real and you can't be proven. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, there's no need to prove. I'm not afraid of this being that I am. I want to get to know who I am. I want to take me out for a walk. I want to take me out for a conversation. I want to, I want to soak in life through this that I am and, and then live outwardly through this, this being that I get to know your very first relationship, your very first intimacy is with you. And so giving yourself like the curiosity to learn who this yourself is and, and then learning through this yourself, you know, what is your mutual exchange? What is your movement with the world? How do you know, how do you feel the sensation and the realization not in a comparative way with like, how is the person next to me do it? You know, we, we know when you're, when you're growing and, and you're kind of taught to be a good person and to care about other people, you know, bringing in and to care about yourself, caring about other people, caring about who this person is, who you are, that is caring about other people, bringing yourself in. We've had, and, and by the way, if you're embodied, love that physical body we've had so many people say well this is my meat suit or the body it's my body your body is made of the same stuff your soul is made of hmm. so really <laughs> yes it's it's part of the man manifestation of your existence it's a representation of of this this extraordinary nature of who you are and so Wow. So now to love my body and to love my mind and my heart, and my, my soul and my spirit, like you could, you know, we often will go out into nature with people and we say, you could sit with just this one tree for the rest of your life. And if you truly open up your curiosity, you'll never get bored. Just learning between you and this tree, you know, what is life and what is existence and, and what is there to be ecstatic about. And, and, and yet, you're not only with one tree. And, and by the way, that tree can be there whether you're in front of it or you just know about it because you've had personal experience with it or someone told you about it. It's in this truth of who you are. It's now a part of you. And so it's, it's getting excited or opening a breath into this being that you are. And if I have the ability to love another, I certainly have the ability to love myself. We do offer that we hear often, well, you can't love another if you don't love yourself. And we ask you please to not, not attack yourself in that way. You can, you can truly love another person and, and still be growing in your understanding and loving nature and going through all the messiness and brilliance of that, of who and what you are. And, and so it isn't, well, I just don't get to love anybody because I, you know, with so many people take that so um, adversely into themselves. Well, unless I learn how to love me and I don't, I don't know how, or I reject that or because of something that happened based on someone telling me I wasn't lovable or me feeling that way at one moment in my life, saying that the truth is I've had lovable and, and not so lovable moments. And the truth is I'm with me all the time. And and I want to know who this myself is in my incarnated physical beingness of existence and in the whole of who I am all at once. And mm -hmm. so taking that breath for loving yourself and loving your body and loving your heart and loving your minds and loving your soul and, and then learning, you know, what is it? You know, you we would say that you can get so much more excited and so much more Mm, juiciness and nectar from loving another when you have that movement of love for yourself and you. But it's never absence. It's what you actually are. That was very helpful. It was beautiful. And I, I, for me, the way I sort of interpreted it was that I'm then tapping into the grandness of who I am mm. uh, instead of seeing myself from that lower perspective. Like, why did I behave like that? That is messed up. We easily yeah. go into these attacks towards ourselves and yes. then we defend ourselves uh, and then we go into fear. But when you you know, expand that consciousness and see yourself as a being and you're curious about yourself, yeah. then you're sort of observing. And I've heard many spiritual teachers speak about being that observer, uh, which is interesting. However, I'm always a bit like, um, 
not skeptic towards that. That's the, the wrong word, but I still want to have my personality, yes. uh, not becoming yes. this neutral Yannicka who's not feeling anything, just being neutral, just observing. But yes. uh, I think there's something there, like stepping into a higher perspective. So yes. that's where I'm at. That's, yes. But it made a lot of sense to me. So you're a participating observer, though, not a disconnected mm. observer. Right. Yes. And so I'm in it. Yes. You know, from, from that being. And one of the things that we'd share with you is that what we notice is so often, you know, we'll, we will ask people, it's fun. What do you want? And they will tell us a lot about what they don't want, which is a beautiful thing to be able to hold space with. Yes. Uh -huh. And yet what we recognize in humans, and this is every one of you, anytime you're in a don't want, and that is from like, you know, I don't want you to put pickles on my sandwich, you know, to the waitress, yes, to I don't want my life to fall apart. We will tell you that threat opens up. So anytime you're in a don't want, so I don't want to not be in a good place with myself. I don't want to have been someone who did that. I have to beat myself up for it. What happens is when you're in a don't want, threat opens, yes? And and then you climb into that and it distorts you and it actually opens up blaming and, and defensiveness and justification and all kinds of things, yes? And so when you feel it don't want, what we really encourage is let it be a notifier of, okay, what do I want? Like, let me, let me take myself out of this field and you all have this field of don't want where threat exists. And I do, I do want to come into myself and then when you feel like what i do want that want that you're moving with in that center is the vibration of open it's in its original form want isn't achy it doesn't feel like it's disconnected from anything and so what i open is and then from there when you say well i don't like that i did that why did i do that and of course we're like we're like ask yourself actually curiously why did I do that? Yes. Without the condemning, you can get very, you can get a lot of information about why you did that. Yes. If you're not condemning yourself when you ask and instead, like, I'm really curious, why did I make that choice? Yes. And, and you're, and you, and you climb in and you've got love open there. You're going to learn a lot. If you ask through that threat, you're just going to start beating yourself up and those things like defensiveness and blaming, you're going to turn against yourself or you're going to turn towards somebody so that you have an excuse, yes? And so relieving yourselves of those practices instead, what I open to is, is knowing that I'm not happy with the choice that I made. That wasn't a match. That doesn't line up with who I am. And I also open shifting and changing how I do that. And one of the things we offer is never apologize for yourself. And so... It is though, you might feel I need to apologize for something I did. I might need to apologize because I, I caused harm or hurt, yes? But I'm not apologizing for who I am. I'm try, I'm apologizing mm -hmm. for a mistake or a misstep or, or you know not being fully really in alignment with myself when I did that. That I want to do for myself and for you so that there's relief, yes? And so it, it is to to bring that forward and, and be curious and explore guilt in its original vibration. Now people throw guilt all over each other. It's actually what causes the illness in your world. If people stopped controlling and causing guilt, there would be no more disease in your world, yes? And so guilt in its original vibration was to say, hey, you're a little off. You wanna think about that again? it's really a good ally. It's there to say, hmm, you know what? You're, that's not really lined up with you. And so it's it's helpful. Control was meant to be your self-artistry. Like, how do I move and, and, and control this in this beautiful, fluid way to actually express who I am and create and cause what I wish to? Control became, with separation, of course, and guilt, something that you throw at and condemn yourselves and each other with. So of course, we're going to encourage you to, to maybe discontinue that practice. Yes. And when you do, you're going to find a whole lot more love for yourself and others than you experience right now. Thank you so much. I love that we dive deep into this. That is an important question. And I think a lot of people are struggling with it and want to love themselves more. And I could speak with you for hours. I have so many <laughs> questions here, but I think we need to bring uh, Jackie back. So thank you okay. so much. Okay, beautiful. Thank you so much. We truly appreciate you. Be very, very well. Hmm.
<laughs> They're talkers. <laughs> They're talkers. <laughs> How are you? How does it feel when you're oh, I'm good? You know, I've had people ask me if it makes me tired. I'm like, I am so washed in love the entire time they're in. I just I always feel extraordinary when I'm oh, with them. beautiful. Yeah. I felt a lot of you in it. Uh that are are they sort of using a lot of your in a way personality and the way of speaking? Well, interestingly enough, it's it's only been in the last couple of years that I've actually kind of allowed myself to really integrate all of Mary's teachings. So mm-hmm. you're, what you're hearing probably is more of me learning about who I am through their teachings, and then wow. it feels a bit similar. Um, because for a long time, I didn't want anybody to get confused about that. And then one day I'm like, why would I not have the benefit, the full benefit? I watch other people do it. Um, yeah of um, having the gift of who they are. And so, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, I have a couple of questions that I ask uh, some guests of mine. And today I want to ask you, Jackie, what is self-love to you? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, it's interesting. I want to say like um, cur- curious and kindness um, and grace. Like, mm-hmm. um, I don't know, you know, the Marys talk about the relief of condemning. And uh, so I think that almost the absence of self-condemning, um, being curious and, and graceful and loving instead. Mm. Mm-hmm. And what is the deeper meaning of life from your perspective? <laughs> uh, um, gosh, for me, it's all about connection. It's all about conversation and growing and learning and discovery and um, appreciation, I think. Um, Showing up in our moments, uh, not being passive, um, being willing to learn something we didn't know before. The Marys talk a lot about, you know, letting yourself feel awkward every day. Um, And the reason for that is like, you're just experiencing something you haven't in quite that way before, and it has everywhere to take you. And so being really comfortable and happy with feeling awkward because Hmm. we're, we're alive. I love that. I love that. Life gets so much more interesting when we (laughs) fun stuff like that. Feeling awkward. Mm -hmm. Um, If some uh, in our audience want to connect with you, could you share a little bit about uh, your work at the end? Sure. Yeah. So we have a website, themarygroup.com, and Mary is M A R Y. Um, we, we do private sessions. We do a lot of group um, series, like six week series. We go on trips. We've been to Norway. Wow. Um, we uh, do all kinds of things. There's just, we do meditation series. We have a, a monthly group that meets that um, is like a Mary Mastery School. Well, they'll they'll bring forth a teaching and go way deep into it and mm-hmm. and interact with how you can apply it to your life. Um, there's a Facebook group called A Soft, Warm, Humorous Place to Land uh, yeah. that the Marys put out little notes every day. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's lots of ways to interact with them depending on what you desire. Mm-hmm. Oh, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being a guest here and all the best with your wonderful work. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing what you do. It's it's really rich and meaningful. Thank you. Yeah.